I just want to show you a close-up of the alpacas. You can see where I used the almond colored fur and I used the safety doll eyes. And then on this one, I used the soft pink colored fur and I show you how to make your own alpaca eyes. I'm also going to show you how to make the feet and you can choose whether you want to use the light brown colored yarn for the toenails or you can use a different colored yarn for the toenails. They also have movable legs. Right now you can see that they're standing. So with the style of yarn that I use for the main color for the alpaca, you'll need to use a really strong worsted yarn like Crafter's Secret. A good alternative would be the Karen One Pound yarn. Because of the movable legs, some people don't like the dimple that's created, so I'll also show you how to make a really pretty dimple cover. I also show a different dimple cover in my video tutorial for the donkey as well as the squirrel. So you can see an alternative dimple cover, but this one I'm going to show one that's a slightly different and it's really pretty. So now I'm showing how they can sit. So you can move the legs to make them sit. And the heads have only craft stuffing in them. So when you choose the main color for the yarn, you do need to use a similar style of yarn that I did to keep the heads held up with only craft stuffing. So that's why I love this yarn, because the heads have no difficulty staying up with this style of yarn. I'll also show you how to place the fur, and it looks like it's really difficult to place the fur, but it's actually really quick and easy. So I show you a really quick and easy method to attach the fur. I had to use two skeins to cover as much fur as I did on these alpacas, but if you wanted to use one skein, you could get away with it. You just wouldn't be able to cover as much of the alpaca with fur like I did. This fur is really soft. That's why I wanted to cover as much as I did with it. So it makes a big difference as far as how soft the alpaca turned out. For this crochet project, you're going to need your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook as well as your 6 millimeter crochet hook. You're only going to need your 6 millimeter crochet hook for when we get to the fur for the, al the alpaca. Then you're also going to need your tapestry needle or darning needle as well as a pair of scissors. For the pom-poms, for the fur, I recommend this very large clover pom-pom maker. It works really great. I use this with my donkey too. So there's a separate video tutorial for my crochet donkey if you want to check it out, but it works really quick and easy for making the hair for the donkey, but for this video tutorial I'm going to be using this for the fur. So this is one of the methods that I used for placing the fur on your alpaca. So this clover pom-pom maker measures approximately 5 inches in diameter if you want to get the same size as me. Now if you don't want to purchase one of these and you'd rather make your own, you can use a piece of cardboard. I actually prefer the way they turn out with the pom-pom maker, but you could use this method as well. It will still work and look good, but you would just take a piece of cardboard or poster board and cut out about five inches by five and a half inches. In this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing how to use both methods, so I'll show you what it looks like when I use my pom-pom maker as well as the cardboard. The yarn that I chose is Crafter's Secret Big Idea. The color is Magnolia Way. And here's some information about this yarn. You're going to need one full skein of this large Crafter's Secret Big Idea but you don't have to buy another Big Idea skein if you don't want to spend the extra money. You could just buy one more skein of the smaller size of the Magnolia Way color. And the smaller size comes in 7 ounce or 355 yards. For me, I just went with two skeins of the Big Idea. 
but if you don't want to spend, like I said, for two skeins of the big idea, you can get one of these and then one of the smaller size skein of the Magnolia Way. I also used I Love This Yarn. It's a metallic pinky toes color and here's some information about this yarn. So you only need one skein of this one. It's used to, uh, to make the ears, the cheeks, the tongue, as well as the nose. You're also going to need one skein of your favorite black colored yarn. So you could use any 100% acrylic black colored yarn that you want. I'm just using some of my leftover black colored yarn and you only need a skein of this. And this is mainly to make the eyelashes if you want to, as well as the mouth. For the fur, I use Yarn B for the moment and almond color. So for one of my alpacas, I use the almond color. On video tutorial, I'm going to show you which one I'm going to be using instead. So this one is about three and a half ounces, 62 yards. And you can use one skein or two skeins, so however much fur that you want to place on yours, but you can get away with one skein, and I'll show you how I used it for mine. This one, again, is almond color, 62 yards, 3.5 ounces, for the moment, by Yarn Bee. There were several colors that I liked. I haven't used this one yet, but I got a cream-colored one, too so you could choose a different color. On video tutorial, I'm going to be using the soft pink color. So for my fur, I needed two skeins of this Yarn B for the moment, whatever color that you choose. You could get away with one skein, but you're not going to be able to cover as much as I covered. I needed two skeins. So with one skein, I'm just going to show you how much I was able to cover. So with one skein, I was able to get the head, so the pom-poms on the head, two pom-poms on the head, the neck ringlets, three fur neck ringlets, and the tail. And then I was able to get one strip for the fur ring that goes around the body, just one. And then this is how much I have left over after completing that with one skein. And I was able to get the tail too. So that's all I could cover with one skein. So you can decide if you want to just use one skein or what parts you want to cover with the fur and what you don't want to cover. Or you can just go ahead and just get two skeins and then use whatever leftover for the smaller alpacas that I'm going to make. So I'm going to be this video tutorial is going to show the large alpaca, but there are going to be separate video tutorials for the small and the medium alpacas. So again, I used two skeins of the Yarn Bee for the moment. For the feet, I used Crafter's Secret, this beautiful taupe color. And here's some information about this yarn. The actual color is light taupe. And you only need one skein. And again, I use this for the feet. For the eyes, you have the option of using safety doll eyes. And here I have 21 millimeter safety doll eyes. And here are the plastic backings. I like either the plastic backing or the metal backing. On my blog, www.helenmaycrochet.com, at the top of the home page, I, there's a link that shows you where I get my safety doll eyes or noses. If you don't want to use safety doll eyes, I'm going to show you how you can make your own eyes as well. So for the eyes, I just picked a really pretty turquoise colored yarn. You could use whatever color yarn that you want for the main color of the eyes. And then I also used my black yarn. And then you also need a white colored yarn of your choice for the eye. I used I love this yarn, metallic, white colored. I love the little metallic strip that goes through the white colored yarn. So we're going to start with your Magnolia Way or beige colored yarn. 
and you're going to drape the yarn across your four fingers. We're going to start with the magic circle. Just use your thumb to stabilize and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your crochet hook and you're using your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. Go under those two loops that are around your middle finger. Go ahead and bring up a loop. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then just take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet. You have the two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and then pull on the other one. And then just take that loose yarn end and then pull on that. And then you're going to turn your work. We're going to be working in rounds. So now you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet into every stitch around. And then when you're finished, you should have 12 stitches in the round. And then come back. So now, if you need to close the center of the magic circle, just turn your work over and then just pull on the loose yarn end on the back and then that will close it up. So now you should have 12 stitches in the round. And we're going to continue to increase the number of stitches in the round. So now, take your yarn marker, and I'm just using one of my scraps of yarn, just place it right where you left off. And we're going to be making three increase rounds for those of you that already know how to do it. So for the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have a total of 18 stitches in the round. And since we started with a six single crochet magic circle, all you have to do is add six to the previous round stitch count. So on the previous round stitch count we had 12. If you add six to that, that means that you have a total of 18. So for our next increase round, when you finish, you just take and add six to the, this round, which was 18, and so you should have a total stitch count of 24 after you finish the next round. So that's how you can keep track of the stitch count for each round. So now, for the next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches, so one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So then, after you finish that increase round, go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. And then you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches.
and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker, one single crochet into three stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch, and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have a total of 30 stitches in the round. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up where you left off, and now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for seven rounds. So when you get back to the yarn marker, you're not going to remove it. You're going to leave it in place so you can tell what round that you're on. So you need one single crochet in every stitch around for seven rounds. And that means that every time that you reach the yarn marker, you should be maintaining your stitch count of 30 for each round. So you're no longer increasing your stitch count. You're maintaining your stitch count of 30. One single crochet in every stitch for seven rounds. So this is what mine looks like. Looks like a little cup after I made seven rounds. Then you can remove your yarn marker and then you're just going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just go right into that next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to finish off. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop, and then pull enough yarn through to sew the snout onto the head. And then you just take your scissors, and then just cut the yarn and then just cinch the knot down. And now we're going to make the nose and the mouth. So keep the where we finished off towards the bottom. So this will be the top of the snout. So you want this towards the bottom and then this towards the top and then we're going to I'm going to show you how I made the nose. So now go ahead and get your tapestry needle or darning needle with the colored yarn on it that you want for the nose. And I'm using my metallic pink colored yarn or pinky toes. And the tip of the nose is going to go right at the top of the magic circle. So I use the magic circle as a landmark. And remember, you want where you finished off to be towards the bottom. And then take your tapestry needle and then you're going to come right at the top of the magic circle. So find the center. I'm going to go right over there we go, right at the top center of the magic circle. And then make sure that you leave enough of a loose yarn end on the inside for tying a knot. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot with the center magic circle, loose yarn end. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim the loose yarn end because if you leave too much of a loose yarn inside, it might get tangled. It doesn't matter, but it does get a little tangled. So I'm just going to trim it to keep it more manageable. And then the other thing you want to do too as you embroider the nose is make sure you don't include the yarn that you're, going, that you're going to use to sew the snout in place on the head. So now I tied a knot and then you're going to make the shape of the nose. So I kind of made kind of a triangle shape with a dome shape at the top of the nose. So what I did first is I just went at an angle so you can see here that I went three rounds at an angle, about a 45 degree angle towards the top of the snout. And then you just bring the yarn through. And then you're going to make the dome shape. So to make it a dome shape, I'm going to go a couple of stitches over and I'm following the round 
the circle round towards the top of the nose. Oop. Let's see, I think I went. You have to be careful too that you don't go you have to come back through. If you go on the inside, then you need to come back from the inside. Otherwise, you're going to circle around the outside of the snout. So I'm going to come in from the inside. And then I'm going to go right where I had finished from the start. Then you're going to go to the opposite side. So here I know that I'm going to finish about right there to make it equal to the opposite side or symmetrical. So I'm going to come up right in that corner so I can finish the top of the nose. And then just go right back in to finish the top portion of the nose. So you can see how I'm starting to get the shape that I want for the top for the nose. Then I'm going to go in the bottom where I first started. And then go right back towards the top of the nose to finish the outline that you want for the nose. So there is my outline. That's what I want my finished nose to look like. So now all you have to do is just go in and out the center of the nose and completely fill in the nose with your yarn. So I just go in and out of the center of the nose with my yarn until it's completely covered. So this is what my nose looks like after I've completely filled it in. And then you can just take and tie a knot on the inside and then trim the loose yarn end. Then take your black yarn and put it onto your tapestry needle or darning needle. And you're going to take and go right under the tip of the nose. and bring the black yarn through. Make sure you, again, you leave a loose yarn end on the inside for tying a knot. And then you're going to go straight down. So I'm going to go down from the magic circle, the bottom of the magic circle, and then count two rounds, one, two, and then go straight down. So make sure that it's not crooked. Then you're going to make the smile. So you can go two rounds out or three rounds out, depending on how large you want your smile. So I'm going to go three rounds out, make a large smile. Oh, I did it again. Make sure that if you exit the snout on the outside, you go back in from the outside. And if you exit on the inside, you have to come back out on the inside. So I'm about even with the center of the magic circle. And then I'm three rounds out. And then for my smile, I'm going to follow that round. So I'm going to go down. And 
and then I'm going to come up from the center of the smile and then go back to where you left off before to finish that smile and then you have a really cute smile and then you have to repeat the same thing on the opposite side so that it's symmetrical And then, when you're finished making the smile, just tie a knot on the inside of the snout. So now I'm going to show you how to make the tongue. The tongue is optional. Go ahead and set the snout aside for now. And then you're going to get your pink colored yarn, or whatever color you want for your tongue. And then we're going to start with the magic circle again. So you start with the slip knot, and then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle, so just like you did before. And then you're going to close up the magic circle. Then, this time though, you're not going to work in rounds. So we're going to make a half circle. So this is what my work looks like so far. And then I'm going to chain one. And then go ahead and turn your work so that you're working back across the half circle. And then you're going to make two single crochet into the next stitch over. Oops. <laughs> then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch except for the last stitch. So two single crochet in every stitch. And then in the last stitch you're going to make a slip stitch. So in the last stitch, go ahead and make a slip stitch. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tongue in place on the snout. So go ahead and pull on that loose yarn end. And then you can see how you have a cute little tongue. So the first thing that I do is I take the loose yarn end and bring it towards the inside of the snout. So I just take my tapestry needle and put it onto the smaller loose yarn end first. And then you can position your tongue wherever you want, whether you want on the left, the center, or on the other side. So I'm going to put it right on the side here. And you don't want to cover the black portion of the mouth. So make sure you don't cover that. And then just sew the tongue in place. And I use my long end that I left for sewing. And then I sew it in place where I want it. And I only sew it across the back of the tongue. So you want to leave the flap free. So don't sew the flap of the tongue, only along the back edge of the tongue. And you also want to make sure you don't cover the smile. So the tongue will be right underneath the side smile, or wherever you placed it. So here, you can see what my tongue looks like. Now, 
The snout's finished, so you could set it aside while we make the head. So for the head, go ahead and get your beige or magnolia way colored yarn. And again, you're going to start with the magic circle. Start with your slip knot. And you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle, just like we did before. And then you're going to close it up. Then turn your work and then you're going to make two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. So then you can take and turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn end to close up the center. Then we're going to take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and we're going to continue the increase rounds and we're going to make one, we're going to increase all the way up to one single crochet into nine stitches and then two single crochet into the tenth stitch. For those of you that already know how to increase, we're going to increase in chronological order. So for the first increase round, you're going to be making one single crochet into the first stitch, and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should already know what the stitch count is because we started with the six single crochet magic circle. Our last stitch count was a stitch count of 12. So if you add six to that, then you know that you should have a total of 18 stitches in the round after finishing that first increase round. So now go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where you left off and for the second increase round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker, one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then take and move the yarn marker up to where we left off and then for this increase round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker, one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then for the next increase round, go ahead and move your yarn marker up and then you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have the hang of it. You can see that we start with one and two, then two and then two, and then three and then two, and then four and then two, and then five and then two. So for this next round, it's one single crochet into five stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Alright, so now you should have the hang of it. You know that this next increase round is going to be one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So you can finish this round and then go ahead and finish the rest of the increase rounds in chronological order. Remember you're going to stop 
when you get to one single crochet into nine stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and then come back. So now you should have finished your last increase round of one single crochet into nine stitches and then two single crochet into the tenth stitch and you should have a total of 66 stitches in the round if you completed it correctly. Then you can take and move your yarn marker up to where you left off and now you're going to maintain your stitch count of 66 in every stitch. I mean one single crochet in every stitch for a total of 66 stitches in the round. So now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 16 rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch around maintaining your stitch count of 66 stitches for each round. Leave your yarn marker in place and you're going to finish one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 16 rounds and then come back. So this is what it looks like after I made one single crochet in every stitch around for 16 rounds. And now just leave a little bit of a loop here where you left off and this is going to be towards the back of the head. So you're just going to make it so that you go towards the front of the head on the opposite side and we're going to sew the snout on and then place the eyes. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that that loop where we left off is towards the back of the head and then on the front of the head you're going to take your snout, make sure that the nose is straight and that the smile is straight and you're going to line up the bottom of the snout and you want the bottom of the snout to be above the last row because you don't want to sew on top of that last row because we're still going to crochet in those stitches. So go ahead and line up the bottom of the snout and then you're just going to sew with your tapestry needle and the same colored yarn and I left a long loose yarn end for sewing where I finished off with the snout and you're just going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to sew the bottom of the snout only. So you're going to go back and forth and just sew the bottom few stitches only. And that is mainly to hold the bottom of the snout in place. Then you can take and using the top of the head as a landmark count down 17 rounds. So then you count down 17 rounds then just line up the nose, make sure it's straight, you don't want it crooked, and you have the top of the snout just under the 17th round, and then take your tapestry needle, and then you're just going to sew a couple of the stitches in place so that you secure the top of the snout. Then you can take and place craft stuffing into the sides of the snout. Then after you place the craft stuffing, go ahead and position the snout again. Make sure that the face is still straight. Then you can take your tapestry needle and then finish sewing all around the snout. So then, after you finish sewing the snout in place, you're ready to place the eyes. To make your own eyes, you're going to take your start with your black colored yarn and we're going to make the magic circle, just like you've done before. You're going to start with the slip knot and then make six single crochet into the magic circle. And 
and then you close it the same way. And then you're just going to make a slip stitch into the first stitch in the round. So take your crochet hook, go into that first stitch in the round, make sure you grab both loops, and then just yarn over and then pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to bring in your blue colored yarn or whatever color that you're using for the eye color of your alpaca and then just bring up a loop and then you're going to tie a knot with the previous colored yarn and then you can go ahead and cut the previous colored yarn which was your black colored yarn. Then you're going to take both of your loose yarn ends and lay them across the circle. We're going to bury them as we crochet. And then you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, go behind your loose yarn ends, both of them, and then bring up a loop and make a single crochet. And then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total actually until you reach that first loop where you joined the new color. So two single crochet in every stitch around until you reach the beginning which should be 12 stitches and then come back. So now I have 12 stitches. I finished my last two single crochet. I'm going to slip stitch into that loop where I did the color change. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the eye in place. Just kind of cinch down the knot. And then you can pull on the loose yarn end in the center if you need to close up the center of the magic circle. And then you're going to need two of these. And you can see how where the color change was, you have a little bit of a line, which is perfect because if you ever look closely at the alpaca eye, they have this little slit in their eye. So you want to make sure that the slit goes on opposite sides. So on the right side, I have the slit going on the right. On the left eye, I have it going on the left. Make sure you position them correctly for when you place the little white dot. Then go ahead and get your white colored yarn. You only need a very little bit. And then make sure that you place the white dot in the right spot. So on the right side, I placed it at about 1 o'clock. And then on the other eye, I'm going to place it at about 11 o'clock. And so I'm going to come up from the wrong side with my white colored yarn. Make sure you leave enough on the back for tying a knot. And then you're just going to go right into the center of the magic circle or a couple millimeters, whatever size you want your little white dot. Then you can take and tie a knot. Let me make sure I'm happy with it. So I'm happy with how the white dots look. So I'm going to tie a knot on the back. Then on the back, I tie several knots. So I tie about five knots because I'm not burying the loose yarn end. I'm going to cut the loose yarn end. So after I have about five knots, then you can trim the loose yarn ends. And the knots will help keep the loose yarn ends in place. Then you can also trim the black yarn just enough so where it doesn't show when you sew the blue portion in place. So I trimmed the loose yarn ends on the back. So now the eye is ready to be sewn in place. Then you just go ahead and place your eyeball. Now if you made your eyes you're going to be a little bit higher on the top portion because they're larger than the safety doll eye. But you can see how I placed my eye. I made the bottom portion almost in line with the nose. So the top of my eye, you can use the magic circle on the top of the head for placement. So if you made your eyes 
the top portion is just under the 14th round and then you just take your tapestry needle and then you just sew all around the border of the eye and only sew the blue portion down so don't worry about sewing anything in the center now if you're using your safety doll eye I placed mine using the magic circle as a landmark I went under just under the 15th row and placed the safety doll eye and then both the safety doll eye and the eyes that you made should have approximately eight stitches between the eyes and this is what my safety doll eye looks like after I placed those so now I'm going to show you how I made the eyelashes so the eyelashes are made the same whether you used a safety doll eye or you made your own eyes you're going to start to the right of the eye right into the center so go right midway from the top to the bottom of the eye come out with your tapestry needle make sure you leave enough of yarn on the inside for tying a knot and then you're going to make your first lash by going straight up about a couple stitches over and then to the top of the eye so that round that's at the top of the eye you're going to go in with your tapestry needle then you're going to come back out in the same location where you started and then you're only going to go down one row for the second eyelash and then you're going to go down one more row for the third eyelash and you can decide if you want to go down a little bit more I decided they were too close so I want to go a couple rounds down so depending on how close your eyelashes are so I like that spacing better and then just go right back where you start it again at the center and then my third one I am going to go down one round and then I like the spacing for that so then you repeat it the exact same way on the opposite side make sure that they look the same you just tie a knot when you're finished on the inside and then trim your loose yarn ends and then this is what the eyes look like when I'm finished with the ones where I made my own eyes and then this is what it looks like with the safety doll eye.